What's up? We're down here at the bottom bracket. This is where all the love happens with the e-bike kit. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to uninstall the bottom bracket. And that begins with removing the cranks. Now there's a few things you need to do to remove the crank. And don't think you can do this without a crank removal tool. This is what it looks like. It's two parts. It's the part that screws into the crank arm and then the inner mechanism that pulls the crank arm. It's called a crank puller or a crank removal tool. Now looking at this crank you'll see a bolt here. This bolt is normal threaded which means righty tighty lefty loosey. So I already pre-loosened this. Now um, so we'll just go ahead and remove this. This is a six mil, so you're also gonna need a good, oh, this is eight mil, eight mil on here. You're gonna need a good set of Allen keys that allow you to, uh, to get all the bolts off that you're gonna need. Always save this stuff. Even though this will never be back on the bike with the e-bike kit, you save this, because you never know when you're gonna convert the bike back. Next thing you do is you take your crank puller and you take this inner mechanism and you pull it all the way out. You see that? See how it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller? Pull it all the way out. And then this on the drive side gets threaded in normally. You thread it in just like that and then you use a crescent wrench to tighten it just a little bit to make sure you you want to make sure you have really good thread contact on here because you're going to be pulling this crank arm off. And if you don't have good thread contact on here, you're going to end up stripping the threads from the crank arm. So don't do that. Also, if you have SRAM, SRAM cranks, some of them have internal crank pullers already built into them. So make sure that you read your owner's manual or check out a YouTube video on your specific crank because I almost uh, stripped the threads out of a uh, SRAM crank because I used a crank puller when the SRAM crank already had a mechanism for pulling the crank off. And then we're going to tighten this again, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And then it'll hit a wall. Good. Now, once you hit the wall, you get your crescent wrench again. And you're going to turn this. You're going to turn it. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Ah, and it'll pull the arm off. Now, I cheated. I already did this. And I just put it back on for demonstration. But that's, see that in there? It's, that's the thing that's pushing against the spindle to pull the crank arm off. So all we have to do is um, do that on the other side. Now, once we do that on the other side, what we're left with is a bottom, uh, the bottom bracket will need to get removed. This is what the bottom bracket uh, looks like. Let's see if we can get a good view of the bottom bracket. So that's the bottom bracket. So here we are on the non-drive side. This is the left side. We're going to go ahead and remove this bolt. This is also normally threaded. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now I already took this crank off earlier, so these are going to be easy to take off. But when you go to do it, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Take our crank puller. Always make sure that you um, uh, spin this crank puller so that the inner mechanism is out far. That way you can get as many of these... Um, uh, the heck are they called? The threads on the arm itself. The more threads on the arm, uh, the deeper this can go, the better it can pull without stripping. The th you don't want to strip the threads on the crank arm because then you're screwed. So we're going to go ahead and turn this in. As long as you can get four or five turns in it, you're good. I'm going to snug it down. You don't need to snug it down too much. And then we'll go ahead and 
spin this. As we turn this clockwise, it's going to pull this crank arm out. Boom, out, cool. Now we're going to remove this bottom, this uh, front derailleur. I think it's a five mil. Looks like a five mil here. It's just gonna be a single bolt. Uh, you do not need a front derailleur with an e-bike kit because uh, it's just a single, uh, a single sprocket up front. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. Always make sure you save your hardware, save your parts, because I've done this on multiple bikes, and at some point you may decide that you want to convert your bike back to a normal bike, which is, again, another big advantage of e-bike kits versus e-bike specific bikes. And so I'm going to hold on to this. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to have to uh, actually remove the whole... This cable, this whole cable I'm going to have to take out. Um, so this is going to have to come off here. Pulled the cable end off. This you're not going to save because these are pennies. And then we're going to pull this through. Now under here, um, we'll need a screwdriver, and I'll show you what that looks like. So under the bike, you have this interesting um, plastic piece that helps route cables and stuff. Now, because the rear derailleur um, cable uh, housing is attached to it, I'm going to actually keep this in place. I'm not going to remove this, but you will need to take this uh, sh cable front, front line, pull that out, and then I'm going to remove this here. And then this also goes up into the frame. I will remove that by, um, this is the front shifter. This is the front brake. You don't pull that one. You pull this one. This right here, this line here, this is the front shifter line. It comes into here. You want to make sure you pull the right one. You give it a good tug and out it'll come. So this shifter will stay in place. Um, I just need to remove the, uh, I'll show you guys how I remove the line, the shifter cable from this. Um, like I said before, if you wanted to spend a few extra bucks, you can get a seven speed uh, shifter install it and then just do regular grips on either side uh, but we're going to try out this grip shift uh, to see if it works well if it doesn't we'll switch it over but I'm trying to not spend as much money as I can now there's a little set screw here that I could undo um, which may be my best bet I may have to take this whole thing off in order to figure out how to how to mess with it. I noticed a little notch in here. There's a little notch right here. I'm gonna remove this little plastic piece. Oh, sweet! So this right here, I can pull the whole cable right out. These cables are only five bucks a pop, so I'm not too worried about them. Uh oh, kind of lose that. So right here, you notice right here, that's where the cable end. That's where it's threaded into. So if I do this, look at that. Boom. Sometimes working on bikes is trial and error. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this little plastic piece back in here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that little doohickey that flew off. That will um, connect here. And then I'm going to go ahead with this set screw and um, tighten this up again. So what I'm going to do is this um, little barrel adjuster here for the 
um, grip shift, I'm actually not going to put that back because if this comes loose over time and they lose this, this probably isn't that difficult to get. It's just annoying. And, uh, and there's no real need for it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this off the bike and put it in the bin that I'll give her, uh, the owner, um, of all the additional parts I removed from the bike. And then that way, um, if she ever wants to reinstall all this, she'll have all the weird parts. It's not like, oh, it, it got lost along the way. So I'm going to line up this grip shift just like it was up against the grip. About the same distance from the grip uh, this direction as it is on the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this set screw. So just double checking here. I am pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and give this another little turn. Doesn't have to be ridiculously tight, but um, so this will shift. But it won't, it won't do anything. Um, but it does give her a nice grip. And part of the reason why I'm keeping this on here is I don't want one regular grip over here and one grip shift over here. For me, that messes with my OCD and like the fact that both hands don't feel the same. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just keep this on here. If she decides she wants to spend an extra 30 bucks, I can go ahead and get her a uh, trigger shifter and new grips. Um, but for right now, this will work. We'll remove this and again, keep this in the parts bin. This is the line that went from the grip shift through the frame out into the bottom bracket, which we saw earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as well as, um, this cable line. Um, I'll go ahead and save that for her. So let's go ahead, flip this bike around and I'm going to show you how I remove the chain. Last but not least, to get this bike ready for the e-bike kit, I need to remove the front derailleur from the chain. So what I'm going to look for is the master link. Now I really hope they used master links 10 years ago. So this chain does not have a master link, which means I'm going to break this chain with a chain breaker. And then I'm going to go ahead and get another 7-speed chain that has a master link. That way, future modifications or changing of the chain is a lot easier. So this little chain breaker tool is not going to work on this. Uh, this is like a link separator. We're going to actually need to break this chain. So I'll show you how to do that now. So I have this Crank Brothers multi-tool, which I've reviewed. I'll put a link in the description down below. But what we need to use is this chain breaker tool. Now, because uh, it doesn't have a master link to separate. Now, because it's a chain breaker, it doesn't really matter which link you choose. You just pick one. And uh, so here's the tool. And the chain will go in here. And then this little thing will go up and remove the pin. So we take our chain, pick a link. It doesn't matter. Uh, just want to make sure it's all lined up. This is the tricky part. You want to make sure that, that the pin is lined up with the, uh, is lined up even, even with that push rod. Now, because this tool is kind of small, you don't get good leverage. So I use this wrench to get good leverage. I hold the wrench, spin the tool. The trick is don't go so far as to push the pin. See that pin coming out? Don't push that pin all the way out. You want it to still be bound to the top link. Uh, that way it's easier to... Well, so much for that. Derailleur is off. This will go in the extra spare bins box. And I'll go ahead and get another chain tomorrow. Cheers.